Hello friends, it's me, and today we're checking out Style Theory. Why are people wearing this giant hat from a Style Theory? Together, let's go. Spring is in the air, everyone, which means mm. that it's sports season. Sports go sports! And with sports season mm. comes some absolutely insane style trends. What am I going to be wearing to the big game today? Do I paint my head to be a lopsided basketball, or do I just bust out the traditional giant foam finger? Should I be putting on my poofy tartan knickerbockers, or carving my sofa cushion into a giant wedge of cheese to wear <sighs> upon my head? If I have any hopes of being king of the jumbotron, I'm going to need something that's going to be a physical representation of my experience extreme need for validation in this world. Ugh, so many choices, so many choices. You know what, let me just put on my thinking cap. Maybe I'll Oh! Style theory cap! <laughs> Hello internet, welcome to style theory. Hello internet, welcome to style theory! Hi. Where today's episode is dedicated to everyone who predicted the ST of this new channel would actually stand for sports theory. Go! Mm. Go, my favorite sports team! Go! Me, me, me! Score a goal unit! Basket! Take it up with the copyright team over at the NFL. Real talk, sports theory would have actually been our third channel. Had it not been for huh? those guys basically telling us, try it, and we'll come at you so hard. Kind of put a damper on that idea. Now this. Yep. Some. Some lines just not really to cross. Very difficult. Very difficult. This might come as a surprise to you, but I'm not what most people would consider a sports guy. Don't get me wrong, I played my fair share of soccer and baseball, but at the end of the day, I was the kid who took bowling lessons in elementary school because that's what you do when you're a scrawny Polish boy from Ohio. As an added bonus, you get to walk away with a free monogrammed bowling ball, which, much to my surprise, does not help you with the ladies. Why am I telling surprise. you all this baseball history? But because sports and style are intrinsically linked. Whether it's played on a field, a mat, or grown-up jungle gym, there's an entire universe to talk about when it comes to sports fashion. There are uniforms, there are colors, there are bathing suits that mimic the physics of shark skin. And that's just talking about the players. When it comes to sports fandoms, there are no limits to what people will do to support their home team. Like Saints fans down in New Orleans wearing black and gold paper bag outfits out of embarrassment during a particularly bad season in the 80s. Or Green Bay Packer fans who cut the cushions out of their sofas to create hats that look like wedges of cheese. I suppose you could say that those outfits are good enough. <laughs> But all of the sports is paling in comparison to the latest trend that's taken the athletic world by storm, the noggin cap. Basically, if you just took a typical baseball cap and gave it a mega mushroom. So to all <laughs> you sports theory stands out there, consider this episode a tip of the cap to you. A very big tip of a very big cap. And for all you regular fashionistas out there who are saying, why should I care about a baseball hat the size of an oven? Just you wait, my friend. Because understanding the noggin cap will help you understand almost every crazy piece of clothing that comes across your TikTok feed whether or huh? not it's ever met a sports ball let's just start off with the obvious question what is this thing well noggin boss is a company that was founded in 2020 by these two sporty dudes sean and gabe they just mm. hi sean hi gabe hi decided to make a big brain move by taking your everyday flat brimmed baseball cap and enlarging it to match your big brain proportions the basic idea here is that hey <laughs> it's not just big brain anymore it's galactic brain <laughs> <laughs> Oversized foam fingers have been a thing in sports for decades. Let's supersize something else. I guess the long-term goal here is that someday we're just going to be biggie-sizing all of our limbs to support our favorite sports teams. As the story goes, Noggin Boss founder Gabe and his daughter made a prototype giant hat like this as part of a best-dressed uh -huh. golfer competition. Not only did they win, but the positive response they got out of this thing led them to turning it into a brand and starting their business. Because let's be honest with ourselves, who wouldn't want someone sitting in front of them at a sporting event wearing headwear the size of Connecticut? They're Oh, Map Hat, you make a very good point. Isn't that obstructing the people behind you? It's kind of bad, right? It's kind of rude, to be honest. Early success brought them over to Shark Tank, the show where businesses pitch their ideas to big time sharks in hopes of getting more funding. And in the case of the Noggin Boss, it worked. Within minutes, they had received a deal to help them put large hats on hundreds of thousands of heads, both fan and pro athlete alike. Since then, this hat has been everywhere. NFL players Josh Allen wow. and Brian Robinson warm to celebrate a win, ESPN reporters donned him on their recaps, even <coughs> Fast and Furious star Ludacris wasn't immune to the giant hat. All of this celebrity endorsement, along with the undeniably eye-catching nature of the hat itself has led to a universe of articles promoting the brand as the next big thing in sports but yeah it stands out literally stands out <laughs> i guess the bigger question about all this fanfare is 
Why? Why are people wearing these elaborate and expensive get-ups in the first place? I mean, these things are running you 125 bucks when customized. It is not cheap for just a gimmicky article of clothing. The obvious answer here is that it's to support their favorite team, but support can only explain so much. You can support something by showing up to a game in a t-shirt, and many fans already do that. So what is it that's driving people to go so far above and beyond? Let's just see what's under the hood. <laughs> under the hat, shall we? The first most obvious benefit of the hat is, of course, getting noticed. Whether it's by other fans, the yep. players, the old Jumbotron so you can appear on the all-important kiss cam, pulling attention is a big factor here. Here on the interwebs, we can also relate this back to social media culture with the feeling mm -hmm. of senpai noticed me or OMG, my favorite creator followed me back or liked my comment. There's a- Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, MadPad, if you actually uh, comment this video, thank you, thank you. <laughs> feeling of connectedness if you manage to get noticed. In sports, an acknowledgement on the Jumbotron literally means that in a stadium full of tens of thousands of screaming people, you, yes you, have been singled out as a particularly passionate fan. In baseball, standing out in the crowd could mean the difference between a player tossing you a spare ball versus just tossing it over to the snot-nosed kid next to you wearing the regular old baseball cap. Screw him, you're the one that's wearing headgear the size of a studio apartment. That ball is yours. And please note that the ball can be very, very costly, expensive if you were to auction it away. Case and point, there have been cases in which a ball can sell for hundreds of dollars. It's like, wow, hundreds of dollars? And sports has a long history of living the mantra bigger is better. Ralph Bruno, the creator of the original Cheesehead, was unsure about his decision to wear couch sofa foam on his head until women started coming up to him asking for pictures. He and his friends liked that attention, and now Cheeseheads are a Wisconsin staple. Steve Schmeller, the creator of the first documented oversized number one finger hand, said this, quote, I remember we used to hold our arm erect with a finger signifying number one. I thought if I could make that much bigger, it would get more attention. Fall in right in line with these historical success Successes, Noggin Boss has this to say about their customers, quote again, Noggin Bosses are social media magnets. Players and fans flock for selfies, and you'll get even more hype when you catch yourself and your brand on the Jumbotron. Now, I'm a guy working on the internet. I'm not poo-pooing anyone who's looking to get attention, but there is another side to this story. Items like the Noggin Boss definitely help you stand out, and in an ironic twist, they also make you feel less alone. Let's yep, it's literally outstanding. Mm go a little deeper into the psychology of an item like this, because there's a lot of mind games to unpack with this enormous hat. There's been plenty of documented research around the reasons we feel compelled to do certain things at sports games that we wouldn't be likely to do anywhere else. Chant like a maniac with tens of thousands of other people, paint our whole face purple, yell at the ref for a bad call that he made six feet away and that you made from 600 feet away. All of these are uncharacteristic actions that come down to a very specific environment that you're in, namely an arena full of people. Events like big sports games cause the unique social psychological phenomenon known as disinhibition and deindividuation. All right, um, let me just try to pronounce it properly. Disinhibit. De uh, blah, 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 sorry. Disinhibit. How do you pronounce it? I'm sorry. This is very important. Known as games cause the unique social mm -hmm. psychological phenomenon known as disinhibition and disinhibition. Deindividuation. The individual the de individual ition. Mm. Yeah. Where a person breaks their normal code of behavior to become part of the group. You ever been to a concert where you belt out a song with like 5,000 other people and it feels great? Have you ever joined mm -hmm. into the wave at a football game and felt really happy? Like you were part Ooh. of something cool in the moment. Ooh. Well, what you're experiencing there is a release of endorphins due to your de-individuation. You are no longer acting alone, making decisions alone, having to work up the nerve to do anything by yourself. You're now part mm. of a collective making choices together. This feeling like you're part of a hive mind leads to disinhibition. The low Yes, that's right. We're all in this together. Ring of your guard when it comes to behavior that you wouldn't normally engage in. Most of it's simple. Feel more comfortable wearing your team's colors with pride, wiggling your foam finger or head banging with your cheese hat. But amplify those feelings and you start to see how Green Bay Packer fans decide to wear bikinis in the snow. Why rolling up to a Raiders game in full Mad Max core seems like a no-brainer. Or even why rioting after your team loses is somehow acceptable. These fans are likely people with a normal job, family, life outside of the games, but suddenly they feel compelled to go big or go home for their 
their favorite team, their favorite band, their favorite creator. Noggin caps are a perfect example of a disinhibited article of clothing, one that we probably wouldn't wear just anywhere, but that we feel empowered to slap on our heads as soon as it can make us feel like part of an in-group who like the same team we do. That said, the psychology of this hat actually goes another layer deeper. Yes, the individual wearing the noggin boss benefits from the feelings of de-individuation, but this phenomenon is actually so effective that it's not just them who feels it, the fans around them rooting for both teams can feel the difference. To show you what I mean, let's look at three famous college football fans. Sean Cottle, mm -hmm. Will Dam, and Brian Hinks. These three hey. brands... Hi, I'm sure of you. Hi. Eska Cornhusker fans achieved national fame when they began wearing these wildly dapper outfits to football games. While they acknowledge that the outfits get attention, they also notice that their designs are appreciated not just by Husker fans, but by fans on the opposing team as well who'd otherwise be hostile. Sean Cottle was surprised by this reaction, saying, quote, both Husker fans and the opposing teams, they all love it. We're all sports fans, and I think they really appreciate the effort, and they get the picture, and it's kind of fun. This Yes, that's right. You actually go the extra mile to support, show your encouragement, show your support, be an uplifting audience idea that when you wear something crazy to a sports game, it doesn't just affect you, but also the people around you, is part of a phenomenon called the white coat effect, where people actually embody the expectations of what they're wearing. The crux of the idea is the same as saying you look good, you feel good, where if you dress a certain way, whether it's fancy or professional or crazy, the way you dress actually changes the way the world sees you and how you yourself behave. In one oh, there's a saying in Chinese, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, 人靠, uh, some, uh, Ren Kao Yi Zhuang Fo Kao uh Fo Zhuang something like that. uh uh something like um uh, man requires man clothes uh Buddha requires Buddha's clothes something around something something around there lah one study, researchers took a group of participants and dressed half of them in street clothes and the other half in doctor's lab coats. They then asked participants to perform a number of tasks while regular onlookers off the street rated them on their friendliness, authority, trustworthiness, and attractiveness. Get this, oh. people rated those wearing doctor's lab coats as more authoritative and more attractive than their counterparts only wearing regular street clothes. And while no, you're not exactly impersonating a respected profession when you put on your noggin boss hat, you are likely presenting yourself in a way that gives off perceived confidence and in return you receive positive reactions from onlookers that'll make you feel and start to act more outgoing and passionate it's a mm, fake it until you make it <laughs> virtuous cycle but we're still not done yet. Even after talking about the psychology of sporting events the mental empowerment of dressing to support your team the ability to stand out in a crowd I still hear some skepticism about these noggin boss hats I hear you saying that actually these hats are all meant to be a joke oh Matt Pat there he goes again taking everything too seriously I can't even oh, well uh, Matt Pat I can understand where they're coming from like if I'm in the match I'm in the stadium and the person in front of me is wearing that hat just let yeah. people wear an ironically enormous hat and move on but and block the person behind you a bit irresponsible mm -hmm. you see that's the interesting word there ironically there are a lot of interesting crazy outlandish pieces of clothing out there that get swept into this category of ironic stuff like oh they're not wearing that seriously they're just wearing it as a joke but let's just look at what it actually means to wear something ironically or just for the lols because at the end of the day that's where these hats may have started but it's not where they're winding up turns out there's a very clear reason we go from wearing fun novelty items for the lols to wearing something because we actually want to no irony involved we can actually see it happen over and over again in the wide world of fashion and it's already huh? starting to happen with the noggin boss rosemary blake's a photographer who knows all about ironic clothes and who shot for ogbff the makers of the tiktok viral mini skirt she says quote there is an appeal in wearing something that'll make others laugh or feel slightly uneasy it's an art form that allows you to be something you're not mismatching prints and bold graphic tees are just another way to boost your confidence and if it's not there use the pieces to fake it till you make it what she's oh see told you fake it till you make it mm. <laughs> saying here is that it takes a lot of confidence to wear something super silly, comically oversized, or provocative in a way that makes people feel uncomfortable. But at the same time, just the act of wearing those things actually gives the wearer the confidence they need to pull it off. Wearing these ironic pieces of clothing tends to lead to positive reinforcement in the form of attention, reaction, strong <laughs> emotional responses in other people. Think about all the unusual items that you might have seen online recently. The big red anime boot, the upside down dress, the whatever these things are. They get a ton of engagement online. Love 
love them, hate them, either way, you have an opinion. And once you see them, you remember them. The makers and brave fashionistas that are wearing these crazy items on the other side of your screen are getting the positive reinforcement of dopamine from likes, comments, and yes, getting asked for selfies. Over time, we stop associating some of these items with feeling edgy, and we just start associating them with feeling happy. Before you know it, more people want to participate in what was considered boundary pushing and weird. But if thousands of people on TikTok are doing it, that's not boundary pushing anymore. That's when a piece of clothing stops being ironic and starts being a trend, honey. But, Matt Pat, I... Okay, I support what you're saying. I understand where you're going from, but I want to play, I want to play some devil, devil's advocate about it. Um, people tend to go overboard. People tend to go cross the line about this. So, case and point, when do you draw the line of, hey, this is expressing myself. Hey, this is independence. Hey, this is freedom. And it crosses the boundaries that... <laughs> Yeah, it crosses the boundaries. I'm sorry if that I played some devil's advocate of the disagree with you. I'm sorry, my pets. I'm sorry. Probably the best example of this irony to mainstream transition is the classic story of Uggs, the sheepskin boots often worn by surfers during the 1960s in Australia. Since the 1970s, these things have gone from popular to hated to popular to hated to ironic, and lately with 2021's ugly shoe craze back to popular, right alongside Gucci rubber platform shoes and chunky sole dad sandals, which all were deemed cool, trendy shoes by Glamour magazine. Other past examples include trucker hats, which exploded in popularity in the early 2000s with the Von Dutch craze and Ashton Kutcher on punk before ultimately disappearing. Now they're making their comeback on the heads of celebrities like Dua Lipa and Rihanna, who may have started wearing them to be ironically uncool, but immediately sparked them into coolness again when fans and followers wanted to be in on the joke. So does this mean that we'll be seeing Noggin Boss jump from the sports world onto the runways of New York Fashion Week? Probably not, though I will say it probably wouldn't be the weirdest thing to strut the catwalk in recent seasons. Yeah, trends rise and fall, rise and fall, rise and fall. Either way, one final tip of the cap to Sean and Gabe for having the confidence to put their money where their noggin is. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go buy some oversized clown shoes before those things pop off. But hey, that's just a theory. A style theory. Keep looking sharp. And if the weird Thank history so of fashion much. is what you're after, click the video on the left to watch us crack open the conspiracy behind the size of women's pockets. Or you can click the box on the right to learn why school uniforms deserve a failing grade. No, Matt Pat. That one I honestly disagree with you, Matt Pat. Uniform shouldn't get a, a school uniform shouldn't get a feeling great. I make a reaction about it. Do check it out. Thank you so much. And yeah, Matt Pat, I really like it that you mentioned both sides of the story and but sometimes the feeling that I get as a viewer, as a as a fan of your work is that you tend to have a bias. A substantial bias. So a very significant bias, ah. Anyways, what's the comment section that you have to say about this video? I love how game and film theory are largely physics and law based. Uh, food theory is largely chemistry based and style theory seems like it's go gonna be psychological based. Hmm, maybe. Uh, I'm not a sports guy but everything Matt has said regarding to uh, the psychology around this, the topic made me think back in the, in the days like Comic Con and anime conventions. True. The creativity in people's costume along with the positive feedback and feeling that a part of the group, the admirers wanting selfies, a lot of it still apply. I always I'm always in awe about the dedication and craftsmanship in this on display. That's right. My pet missed the opportunity to say, stop being ironic and start being iconic. <laughs> That's kind of correct. That's kind of correct. Alright, um let's see a few more. Oh this one uh, let's see. Can confirm the white coat effect 100% when I'm when I wear a fluffy dress, the whole posture changed. Uh, changes. I move my lips differently. Uh, my limbs differently. I just feel elegant and cute, <laughs> and I adjust my behavior to match. Huh? Interesting. So um, thank you so much for watching this video. I I'm just glad that MapPad touched on some different uh effects. Like from the white coat effect, the d the this individualization thingy and a de-inhibition thingy, you know. Oh my gosh, I'm bad at pronouncing these words. Sorry. But hey, that's just a theory. A style theory. Keep looking sharp. Thank you. Hey! 
and I hope to see you all in my next video. Thank you so much. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel and comment down below if you have any share of us. Thank you so much. Kaboom! Subscribe! Thank you. Thank you so much.